Hey, everybody. Welcome to our um, uh, kind of a discussion about portfolio tonight. Uh, I am very excited and glad <laughs> that Mr. Raymond Bonilla is in the classroom. And I'm going to call him Raymond because I know his mother wants me to call him Raymond. Uh, <laughs> we just had that discussion. Uh, Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tonight, we're going to do have a conversation about the portfolio. My feelings are the portfolio is uh, it is the icebreaker. It is the thing that makes the difference. Uh, it's what represents you as an artist, uh, cer certainly as an illustrator and a, a concept artist, character designer, or uh, call portfolio the uh, in some way a body of work as a fine artist. It's 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 everything, and you really have to be thoughtful. And it's not something that you just throw together of images that you think are cool. <laughs> they have to be functional at the same time. Um, so I really do feel that, you know, everything I've been doing educationally since 1995 has been, all been aimed at helping people develop portfolios so they can start their careers. And it's the, it, is the, it is the door and the gateway to, to having a career. Um, before we get started, I want to show you some really nice artwork from Mr. Bonilla. Um, Ray is a phenomenal artist, very good illustrator. Uh, I think he's, uh, for me, looking at his work, and I don't want to offend him, um, but but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> but he, he's a uh, uh, he's a natural painter. Uh, he just he is just uh, and and. Uh, he, Again, we all work so hard at everything that we do. He's probably laughing. He says, "There's nothing natural about it." He said, "I've worked my yeah. ass off to get to get good at this." And uh, <laughs> but to me, it see it just seems to be flow from him. And uh, uh, Ray teaches with us in, in Visual Arts Passage in the in the uh, Fine Arts program, and he teaches our our last uh, our ending uh, painting program class, and. Um, I'm just lucky to have him there because he's just having great success and he's so good at it. Well, thanks, John. I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, this one he threw together in the last last couple of minutes for his last show. <laughs> uh, anyway, still got the scars. Beautiful, beautiful work. A um, few, few pieces from me, things I've done did this 30 years ago is a started out as a book cover has been used on all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I, my, I kind of focused on celebrity por portrait and focused on drawing people and painting people. It was a lot of what I did as an illustrator. Uh, it's not, I don't do it very often now, except to practice. Um, this is what I do now. I paint pictures for gallery. And uh, it's been, it's been a good ride been fun love that piece all right back to portfolio is everything things you really have to consider again um you got you to me you, you know a, a portfolio well not to me to, to our in our industry a portfolio is the thing that represents you uh it is the job interview and anybody that was that's gone on a job interview before, and I assume most of you in this classroom or in this event tonight have been on some type of interview before. Um, I hope that you did your research before you went. Uh, that the goal, you know, as a, as an artist, ident identifying what your opportunities are, are are huge. You know, learning about the industry, uh, researching potential clients. You know, do your homework, do your due diligence, figure out. Um, you know, artwork has to be functional. Um, uh, industry work does. Uh, it doesn't so much on the gallery side. It has its own its own parameters. But as an illustrator and a character designer, you're solving problems for people. You're you know, illustration means to explain. You're coming up with a visual solution for some for something. And so, identifying the function of the work, not just how good the work is, but is it functionally usable for the people you want to work for. Ray, am I saying anything that makes any sense? Yeah, that's exactly what, what um, right, right on the button. Like if you were to sort of condense it into just one thing, being specific, 
um, as, as to what your portfolio, what purpose your por portfolio serves uh, is, is so important. And I, and I think it's so important. And I'm, I'll talk briefly about our classes later on how we've identified the, the function of the classes to help you, to give you the language, to give you the information you need to put the portfolio together. Um, again, people come in, you know, start at all different levels in our program or just, you know, thinking about getting into industry. Some people have magnificent uh, facilitation, drawing and painting, um, but they don't understand how to problem solve or they don't have good design skills. They don't, you know, they're not good composers, um, but you have to learn what you're trying to accomplish, you know, and again, that requires commitment. You have to, I'm not, not talking about commitment to doing push-ups and sit-ups all the time. I'm talking about commitment, like directionally. What, what are your options and things that you need to decide up front? Because they're really going to determine um, what what's in your portfolio. Um, you know, simple things like, all right, do you live in a location uh, that, that offers the type of work that you want to do? Are you going to have to move? Do, you know, what's your financial relation to, uh, situation like? What's your timeline like? Um, uh, do you want to be a, do you want to have full-time job uh, or do you want to be a freelancer? Well, if you're going to be an editorial illustrator, you're going to be a freelancer. Uh, if you're going to do book illustration, you're going to be a freelancer. If you want to do character design, you might have different opportunities and it might require full-time. So you have to really consider what you want your outcomes to be and set those outcomes, create a path to, to, to a, that has a, a an outcome. Ray, you're not saying anything. <laughs> no, this is, I mean, like, uh, I, I'm just listening to make sure that I'm doing the, I, I've done all this. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was, you know, just being realistic with your, with yourself and, and being very specific about, what it is that you want. I think that's one of the biggest things that I um, was drilled into me, you know, as a student and um, just from looking at all the professionals that, uh, you know, I looked up to is everything was about specificity. You know, uh, if you're working, like you said, you know, are you, I mean, these are real questions you have to ask yourself. Are you willing to relocate? Um, is your life set up? Do so you could do that? Um, you know, uh, financially speaking, you know, I think like illustration, you could freelance. So you, do you have to live in an expensive city? No, you don't, you know, um, but, uh, and what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, to that? You know, all these things you have to, to, to ask yourself because your time is short and uh, your, your time is literally, it has a tremendous amount of value. And the more you're, you're specific about, what it is that you want to do, and what your goals are, uh, you know, the the best, uh, the, the more efficient you're going to be using that time uh, Ray, to I, get there. I, I, I've seen so many, I've seen, I've got a lot of great success stories, of, you know, people that have come through our program, but I have a lot of stories about people failing. And I've seen a lot of people that have really quite good skill, they're good craftsmen, and they've avoided thinking about you know, making a commitment in one direction. They've avoided thinking about the function of their work. Is this is this solving the problems, the needs for the art director? And they've always wondered. They, I actually know a lot of artists that have gotten bitter about it. And it's like, you're not, you're not seeing the big picture. You know, yeah. art directors hire us to solve a problem for them. You know, there's a reason they hire, they, they hire artists to, to, to make this work. It's not just because it's a pretty picture. It's got a function. Um, yeah. I've, you know, timeline, I put that the end there is so important. I always feel like the biggest killer of, of careers happens from the line <laughs> relationships. So my dad used to say romance and finance got in the way for most artists. Um, so, <laughs> uh, uh, getting there quicker, um, is really, really important. The faster you can do it, the better off you are. Uh, because I think it, it it gives you a foothold. Once you start, you know, it's like people always think, oh, I got to get so good before I can start getting a job. You learn so much once you start getting work. Right. Um, you know, uh, you learn, I, I really do. I really think that people get 
so much better in the first couple of years they're actually doing professional work. Um, but remember the biggest job, here, I'll go to the next slide. Um, the biggest job for the emerging illustrator, you know, what or illustrator artists that what they what you're trying to do is become memorable. And a portfolio, if it's going in too many diff different directions, it's very difficult for an art director to understand what you're doing. Um, things need to be recognizable. Uh, you know, the, 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 I always say this, the most obvious is like celebrity portrait. Um, if you're showing, and again, you better know, you better do your homework because I know that there's different parts of the world, different, <laughs> different um, countries that I wouldn't know who the celebrities are or even current actors, I wouldn't know who they were. Um, you better do your homework and know who, you know, if you're going to do likeness and show people likeness, you have to show them somebody, you know, the, the obvious one is portrait. If you're showing them a portrait of your cousin, um, they don't know what that person looks like. Um, if you're doing really well-known people that are connected to that part of the industry, they're going to be able to make a, a, a good decision. That's just as important as, as in storytelling. If you're, if you're showing them a story and you want to show that you're a good storyteller, if they don't know the story, it's very difficult to show that. So you got to really start um, understanding what their needs are and what their what their work what their world is because you're working in their world. Yeah, and these are these are you know they're so simple questions, but it's it's a it's amazing how a uh, few times you know uh, you know uh, upcoming professionals really ask themselves those questions and and I get it like you're in school you're learning the the function of things you know. Uh, uh, the the craft of of drawing and, and, and design and color and and painting and so on and so forth but uh th there comes a point where if you want to work professionally that is a given that's like a prerequisite uh for putting together a portfolio and uh the next step is actually building that and you know we use the words like building a portfolio because you literally have to put brick on brick <laughs> you have to make conscious decisions uh and uh if it's poorly built it's going to show uh and you know I, in terms of like functionality uh, you know the perf you know you nailed it on the head in terms of like the if you showed a, a really beautiful portrait of your cousin to you know the uh, the art director of time magazine or you know or a place that does portraits they're going to be like that's beautiful i, I don't use that and so it has nothing to do with the quality of the artwork. It's how how well it, how functional was it that you showed that. So, right. you know, I, I think that that's one of the it's a it's a really really big difference. Uh, and so the art directors aren't going to be you know you should already know how to be you know, you should be facilitated in in the tools that you uh, you know that you're employing. So that that should be a prerequisite for it. But it's how well does it communicate or solve the problem that the art director uh, has? And I think that that is, uh, you know, just asking yourself just simple questions like that. Like, what is it for? You know, I mean, we talk about that all the time in, in class and in study hall, like, what is this for? And um, yeah, that's the first know, question. If, like, you know, judging a illustration show, like judging the society of illustrators, I've been very fortunate to have done that three different times and um or spectrum or whatever it might be you cannot really give success or failure to an illustration and you less you know the parameters you have to yeah. know why it was made and what its function is and your portfolio has to has to be able to explain that at first view you can't you know it's no nobody's going to take the time to try to figure it out there it's it's got to explain itself um the other thing I, i'm going to just kind of uh, really stress is this it, I have in bold letters there. It, a portfolio needs to be memorable. The artists that I follow, the, the successes in the industry, if I, you know, somebody, you know, like Ray, I could, I, I think I could look at a piece, anything that Ray paints, and I don't need to see his name next to it. Uh, even though he signs it in big, big letters at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need to see that. I know he did it. There's something about it that's cohesive, that it, that's connected to all of the, connects all of the work together. I see a Sterling Hunley. I don't need to see it. Or a, a Victor Nye or a Catherine Lamb or uh, Dale Stefanos. I don't need to see um, uh, Audrey Benjaminson. I don't need to see that name because it's, 
it it is uh, it represents the work represents them. I've been looking at so much of it, and it's cohesive. That's how you become memorable. You have to think about personal voice, and it has to be paired with function. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go to the next slide here. Uh, this is uh, uh, Edward Kinsella put this together. We're talking about extreme focus. It's like, okay, I'm going to be an editorial illustrator. Or I'm going to do, you know, cover art, um, you know, fantasy cover work, RPG games, whatever it is. Within inside of that, you still have to show some range. It can't, you can't be a one trick pony. You have to be usable. Um, so you have to kind of really explore and really pay attention to the industry um, uh, of what your limitations are. Of what you can't yeah and again and it varies for different you know different assignments vary all the time and different parts of the industry vary um i one of the things you know that i'll as as i'm reading through this um you know don't be confused the function still has to be there don't confuse the art director it still has to be usable for them if it's not you know um uh, the great art director lauren penapento in our classes and we, we, as a visiting artist, uh, she has come in and talked a number of times to our students. And I remember, I always remember her saying this. She said, if you want to do cover work and you want to work for me, you better be showing me covers because that's the only thing I'm paying attention to. Right. Um, um, so I may appreciate other art, but when I'm looking to hire somebody, it has to be functional as a cover. And so, yeah, you better, you better figure out what that function is. The making it personal, back to making it memorable, um, having having something that's like uh, an art director has to feel comfortable that they know what they're going to get from you. So there has to be consistency, not only with function, but with the visual and the aesthetic of it. So that voice that we put that, that you have to build into all that work becomes so, so important. Yeah, uh, I think that that's the that's I, I love this, this because it's it's kind of everything that you has to go through your mind when you're putting things together and it goes to show you like you can't just put anything you want uh and um i love the the, the fact that it's you know you're you're working on a cohesive body of work so there are going to be things that you have to that aren't going to go in there and like you had said before like again it's you, you could show you know it's like if you showed an, a beautiful illustration a beautiful editorial illustration to a gallery director, they're going to be like, Hey, this is a nice piece, but I don't, you know, I don't, there's no use for that. Uh, you know, we don't sell work like that, uh, in, in my gallery and vice versa. It's like, if I showed a beautiful landscape to, uh, uh, a, editor, a magazine, uh, that doesn't do landscapes at all or a nude figure, uh, no matter how beautiful it's, it's done, it doesn't have a use uh, for it. And I think that that's, uh, that's crucial. And, um, it just about like functionality. I mean, range within the outcome, it shouldn't confuse the audience. I mean, all of these things you gotta be asking yourself when you're looking at your portfolio, uh, because a really great portfolio, memorable one is not only consistent in voice, but it's also, you know, that, that experience is very curated and you just have to remember that every great portfolio that you're seeing has been curated by the artists uh, to get uh, a certain outcome. Yeah. And hey, there's a, um, there were some good questions. Uh, whoops. They changed a little bit. Um, but this first one, I could spend the rest of the night talking about it and I won't. Uh, but I love this question from charity uh, with the huge significance of one's portfolio. Is it really possible to break into the field without an art degree, two plus years of experience? Ray, I'll let you answer that question first. <laughs> Man, it is. It's. It, I uh, in all the years I've so I've I worked on it as an illustrator, uh, did a lot of editorial illustration uh, and advertising, did stuff for the New Yorker before I be started focusing primarily on gallery, um, and I currently do work for Wizards of the Coast and Magic the Gathering. You know, on on the side, you know, along with my gallery paintings. I will tell you, in all of the experience, I mean, I haven't had like the long a career half the even a quarter of the length that John has, but I have yet to be asked for my degree. Um, you know, as it, everything is about portfolio. Uh, I remember I was asking an art director about what do you look for <laughs> in a resume? I remember early on and it was, um, 
uh, a recruiter for a studio. And this person has said, your resume could be written on toilet paper for all I care about. The only thing that matters is your portfolio and whether or not it's functional for our needs. Um, so, it, you know, you it, know. as a, uh, as an illustrator, I totally agree with that as a gallery painter, you know, your, your, um, um, Beate, your records of past shows, all of that are very important to have and, right. and an artist statement. Uh, as an illustrator, they mean nothing. Uh, I have so many art directors, you know, like, and we're going to go and look at some portfolios here in a couple of minutes, but it's like, show me art first. I don't want right. to read about you. I don't want to know what you had for breakfast. I want to know that you can do what I'm looking for. And they're that direct. Um, right. And I want to see, uh, the other thing I thought was so beautiful, it's like, if you coerce me to go to your website from an image that I saw on social media or a direct mail piece or a newsletter, I better see work like that. Right. Um, it better be consistent. I want that voice or I'm not going to pay any attention to it. Um, degrees have nothing to do with this in this industry. Um, there, there's a couple of caveats where if you're going to work for a company, as far as getting um, visas to work overseas, there's that type of thing. But right. as as an illustrator that work in the States, nobody cares at all. They care what your portfolio looks like. They care what you're capable of doing. It is everything. Um, uh, da -da -da. Great question. Yeah, good question. And, you know, it, 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 I, I'm going to say one more thing about that, because this is really, I'm really, I mean, I've built my life around this since 1995. I've been building non-traditional art education and uh, a, different from what art and design colleges offer. And my theory has always been help people make a portfolio, get somebody, if they, if they want to work in the industry, you got to get to a portfolio. And it doesn't matter where you're from, who you know, obviously, I, I, li I live that, I was in my my father was one of the most published illustrators in the world when I started working, and he could do me no favors except help me make make me a better artist and help me with my portfolio. Uh, connections had nothing to do with it. Uh, it wasn't in the portfolio. It wasn't helpful. Um, but uh, education, I would say, if I were any part of traditional education, I would focus more on the liberal arts part. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. There's yeah. so many opportunities, so many places. And, you know, I think we handle the art side of it as well as anybody. And it's very inexpensive compared to art and design school, uh, but it's very focused on the art. You still have to have, you have to build a well of understanding, whether it's history or literature or come up with ideas and problem solve, that's going to be very useful for you. So that's my, that's my complete answer on that. Um, uh, uh, what do you think makes the marked line in the world of illustrators and gallery? Um, I guess that's a distinction between the two, Ray. Is that what you what what, what you, you would? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's what I, I read it as. Um, as a as both, and um, I can tell you that there really isn't a line outside of, you know, uh, what what's the purpose? What's its apply to because there, there's certain illustration that can be uh hung in galleries um uh, i mean I, I look at edward kinsella's pieces and i you know they can function as as gallery pieces as you know, standalone pieces of art uh it it's so there really isn't much of a difference outside of that you just have to be you know one doesn't necessarily go into you you can't just throw one piece in, in into the other you'd have to do your research uh, on that. Uh, and, you know, uh, and it's just purpose, I guess that's, that's really, you know, what is it? What was its function? What, what, what did it, uh, what did it try to do? I mean, I had a friend, uh, who I, who somebody asked him that question. He said, well, it all depends on, uh, I difference between editorial, I mean, illustration and fine art is the name on the check. Uh, <laughs> you know who's who's the checks from you know and that's that's literally it i mean, I oh, mean yeah, but but back in the back in the day there used to be a very distinct line uh, and i totally get that but those those barriers are you know have since dissolved yeah uh, right I, it was I huge think. when i got I'm, gonna, I'm just going to chime in really quickly because i know we keep getting more and more q and a and everything and i know we do have a kind of a an addendum of things to cover tonight and so I was just wondering, maybe we keep that Q&A coming through. And then, John, I know you have more to talk about 
I do. And then we can. Um, and I want to, I want to, Timmy, I want to, there's two, the two top questions right now I can answer in one. Okay, cool. And then I was thinking quickly. we can, we can tackle uh, some of the Q and A that's effort, offered during the talk, uh, just so we know how much time we've got. And, uh, and we can stay on topic with what's tonight's topic, which is portfolio. Yeah. Well, there, there's Perfect. good questions. There's some good sure. questions that are connected sure. to the portfolio. Yeah. Um, I'm going to refer to this. Somebody was talking about, they, they're asking question about style. Should you attempt various styles? In our, in, we do it in our classes all the time. You always should be experimenting as an as an artist and an illustrator. You should be trying different things all of the time. As you're searching for how to solve a problem, you're also searching for an aesthetic that fits it or that fits you, and you need to chase that. Um, there's ways of chasing voice. You know, learning how to to draw from memory, learning how to use yourself as a library, because that's what makes you your your experiences are all in your head, and learning how to tap into that is very much a part of being um, personal as an artist and and where voice comes from. But constantly be thinking about experimentation. Um, Stop, but I think when you start showing your work, you be fairly directional with it. You might have, even if it's if if there are two very dis distinct things with a portfolio. Just uh, 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 say you do uh, line work, uh, you do pen and ink, and then you do digital work. That's you know comic work or whatever, uh, comic or cover or whatever. But don't be afraid to separate them. You can approach them with two different portfolios. Um, you, there, you can certainly do that. But again, don't do anything that's going to confuse. Um, art directors need to walk away with knowing what you do. And they got to remember you for doing that. And that's why I'm saying become memorable. Very, very important. Okay, let me, let's get through, uh, let's click through these. Um, and when I say focused, I mean, this is not every area in the industry, but it's some pretty big groups. Pick one. Maybe there's two that, you know, like editorial and book can go together pretty well. Editorial and advertising aren't going to go together very well at all. Um, but at the beginning, pick one and and let that function be the driver. Every one of our instructors on the illustration side uh, were students of mine or students of the of, of our programs. Uh, Sterling Hunley, Catherine Lamb, Dale Stefanos, uh, Ashley Lovett. Um, and they all started in one direction. They all started as editorial illustrators. It's the it was you know it's the easiest way to approach the industry, and it's also the most broad. And it was the easiest place for them to get started. And then they ventured off and started developing other parts that related to it. So they started doing book work, or they you know in Catherine's case, she's doing you know work for Criterion Collection that has to do with old you know old movies. You know uh, she's doing some poster work, um, but start with one and get that right. Again, if you can if you can be professional in one area and it's especially true on the concept side and we changed our program because we used to think well we're going to make generalists and we decided no let's just focus on character because it's the broadest, it's a complete pipeline and it relates to other pipelines. But if you can do one thing professionally, you're hireable. And that's again Ray, you know, we 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 joke about this but Getting work is the thing that I, I know it sounds kind of ironic, and maybe I'm saying this in a clumsy way. But when you start getting a work, getting work, and I've always asked, we have all these artists come into our program that talk about, you know, the history of how they got started and stuff. I can ask them, when did you start becoming a professional? I don't care if it was 30 years ago. They'll tell you the month. <laughs> right. And they'll say it changed my life because then all my focus went into my artwork. That's all I had to worry about was making art. And it, it changes your life. But so I think the quicker you do it, the quicker you do one thing professionally because it makes you hireable. And so that's, you know, that's why focus becomes so important. Uh, this is and, and we're not going to talk much about this, but this is our the the. This happens when you walk into our illustration portfolio class. You have to create a portfolio brief. You have to commit to a genre, what part of the industry you want to work in. Is it publishing? Is it advertising? Is it editorial? Um, and then you're going to come up with some muses, three artists that are doing what you want to do. And then you're going to follow them backwards. What are the venues? 
what are what are the, uh, excuse me what who are the venues and who are the art directors there art directors are on our industry even on the concept side they're the ones that make final decision on who gets hired uh, for a studio the, the artists that get hired so you have to know what you're competing against and you have to you have to have this will give you a path this will give you look these people are doing it it gives you something to compare to and there's reason why art directors are hiring these artists all the time um, they have the right function. It could be that they're very uh, <laughs> um, dependable. Um, you know, they deliver on time, um, that, which is a big deal. Uh, yeah. But but we do this in each one of our programs. This is the you know for for the illustration program uh, in the character design. You're doing something very similar. I'm not going to even discuss it because we got plenty else to do. But you're trying to define. Who is it I'm making this portfolio and what is that going to be? Same thing uh, for the galleries. You're changing from art director, you're changing gallery, uh, you're changing the names to gallery directors and gallery uh, gallerists, and you're and you're going to be looking at what their gallery is already rep what what they are representing in their gallery now. Are you a good fit? Who are the artists that are in there? Uh, am I doing and again, you got to do your homework and do your research, but it all comes starts. It starts with commitment. All right. Again, this is the path. This is the chain of classes and I, everything I've been saying. This is the, you know, everybody, you know, when most people, most artists start and they come to us and they think that polish and finish is everything. They think having real great drawing acclimate and being able to render something and finish something, that's not true. Uh, you could be a really good illustrator and have very low skill set um, uh, if you have great ideas. <laughs> um, because the idea is going to trump facilitation. If you can have just enough facility to get that idea across, you can be a successful illustrator. It doesn't have to all be about, you know, uh, learning anatomy and, and understanding perspective at the highest level. Um, it's great. You can layer things. You can be good at it all. <laughs> uh, but, you know, learning, even learning how to draw, I mean, that can be a lifelong pursuit. It's something that can take a long period of time. Um, so I we encourage all of that. But that first class process, skill and craft, that's getting the physical aspect of constructive picture making down. The ideation is the cognitive side. Those are the two big skills that you really have to have to start making portfolio work. And then, of course, understanding um, who you're making it for and what the function is. And so we've laid out our program as a complete path for it. Uh, the other classes do the exact, I mean, the other programs do exactly the same thing. It's about pipeline, you know, advanced character design. Um, it, when you get into that character design portfolio, you're doing the same thing the illustrators are. Who are the art directors? What are the IPs I'm making this for? And then ultimately, um, uh, you get to a place like in our in our in our last class, our career development class. You're going out and you're pursuing it. You should be. You should be getting your social media. You should be getting your website. You should be doing all that, creating a newsletter, marketing yourself, all of that stuff, and still working on voice. Um, but again, people come into our program and they may take may take classes multiple times if they don't have the skill set that they want. Um, but this is really the grouping and and the path. So I just don't really have anything. Oh, I was just going to briefly, you know, here's our instructors. I encourage you to research them. They're magnificent. You notice two of them that work for Blizzard Games there. <laughs> uh, not a bad place uh, to be working if you're, uh, uh, or not a, not the the right people to be learning character design from. Let's put right. it. Yeah. Um, and then, um, except for the guy in the middle. Um, yeah, you, yeah. You can delete that one. <laughs> uh, Cassandra, I, I got such a kick out of Cassandra. I asked her recently uh, in drawing night how many open zines she was involved in last year. 16. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Wow. And again, yeah. the whole idea is you're learning from people that have gone through this process and they're doing it at the highest level. 
And anyway, that's that that's I think that's all we really need to cover there. Let's start looking at some artwork. Uh, Timmy, Sweet. do you want us to address any more questions? Before uh, that? Well, or one thing I would one thing I will chime in is I just want people to know we received well over 100 uh, portfolios. So, yes, um, John can explain, you know, the reason for the portfolios he did choose. Obviously, we don't have time to go through all of them, but, um, you know, we, we want to uh, we want to offer an educational and insightful experience for the most people. And a lot of these portfolios address um, issues yeah. and constructive things that address that that will be applicable to your work, even though it's not your portfolio. Um, the 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 usually and that's and it's that way with artists learning. Usually, there's uh, like a generic <laughs> problem that people struggle with, and so there's you know kind of a generic. Uh, answer to some of uh, to some of the portfolios. I'm actually going to start with so, a really good portfolio, and then I'm going to work and I'm going to explain what it does. And I want Ray because I don't think Ray has seen this, um, but this is a, a past VAP student, and I got a couple of those I want to show tonight, and then I I got a whole bunch of that that are not. And uh, let me get to. This is not the right place. I want to be right here. Reese Spice. Uh, Reese was a student in our program. It was probably, it's been a year probably since they've been out of the program. And again, the work that Reese has created, a lot of this work was created in our program. But how he's displaying it, just it blows me. It's it's exactly how it should be. As I said, I mentioned before, show me the work. Uh, you know, an art director saying, "Show me what you do. Show me a voice, and show me what I'm looking for." And again, when things aren't completely, I, I love the fact that when things aren't completely explained visually, where it doesn't, where you can't get to it, there's a little explanation there of what it's done for, and that's all you need. It gives the art director enough information, but this. The thing I take away from this, Ray, and you can, this all looks like it came from the same artist. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just going to say, I mean, you could see like they're different, you know, when we say focus portfolio, it's, it's, you know, you're not, you're not taking everything that you love about art and only boiling it down to one, one thing. I mean, you can explore a lot of things and you got to go through the process of doing this, but you could see in this portfolio, there's many different types of applications of medium uh, and mark making, but it all feels the same. There's a one voice driving the whole thing. Uh, and that's what makes a really great and memorable portfolio is that I can, I'm, I don't feel like it's 10 different artists uh, and it's, it's just one artist. I could tell that's just one person and one person's voice that's going through the, the whole thing. That's that's really great. That's a beautiful portfolio. Yeah, and it's organized in really big picture things, uh, not to be a bad pun, but it's like, look at these tarot, uh, tarot cards. They were done. That's awesome. Yeah. Really well done. The work yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, very good artwork, very consistent with voice. And there's no question what they were done for. And then the murals. And look at the look at the ground that that this one artist is covering and showing, displaying, has them organized. If if this is where it would be a mistake, if this was mixed in, like with the with the editorial stuff that's that you can see and the book stuff that you can see or the comic stuff that you can see on the front, if this is mixed in there, it's not it's going to feel out of place. Right. Um, Reese controlled that, and. Uh, Again, doesn't need to be complicated, super simple, but I love this. I love going back to the portfolio and just getting hammered with a bunch of really good work that relates to each other. Extremely and well. When, and when needed, you know, you get information that's really easy to access to, which right. is which is great. Right. Again, it's it's impossible to assess illustration if you don't know what the function is or what it was made for. You know, we, we do study hall. Um, you know, we have our live classes on the weekend. And then every, every Wednesday night, we have another live class, which is study hall, where all our classes come together. And I have three or four of our other or two or three of the other instructors come and join me. 
And so you see work from all different directions. And the first thing that's always asked is like, okay, so what is this for? What is this right. made for? You know, we could all be ooing and eyeing over what it is, but what is it made for? Because we need to know if it's functionally doing the right thing. So let's jump to some other things. I have right. uh, yeah, really well done, Reese. And thanks for yeah. submitting this. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Got an art station page here. Ray, I'm going to let you swing at this first. Yeah. Um, Yeah, nice. I mean, Art Station, by the way, is a great place to display your work. It's a really clean mix. Uh, if you can, if you curate it correctly, I think that, uh, like for instance, this has has very much a. Uh, I could tell that you know the person is trying to get work in fantasy. You know, uh, there there aren't um, there's no, there's not like a still life of apples uh, mixed in with uh, you know horned uh horned people or warlocks or, or or anything like that so i think that you know the the theme of it is consistent that's great um that is definitely a a first uh a great step forward uh, on that i think the um uh overall i think it's it looks like it's more in line with uh gaming uh i would say almost like uh tabletop gaming or like Magic: The Gathering. It almost seems like or, or RPG games, uh, yeah. RPG games, um, and uh, I, I think that's great. I think one one of the things, um, yeah. So I, I think the 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 captions on, on it. I mean, in in my opinion, I think like the captions just keep it clean. Uh, uh, in terms of the work, uh, I think with something like this, uh, it's it's just about visual consistency and. And being as um, uh, uh, as visually literal uh, or, or as facilitated in a given style as possible, so a lot of this stuff is uh, has a very uh, almost uh, uh, stylized realism uh, look to it, and just being you know just committing to that uh, as as much as possible, and really thinking about shape design, really thinking about readability. For instance, like this. Oops, uh, that piece I'm sorry, of, right? Here, I'll no go problem. back. Yeah. So, like, th just think about like this type of stuff. You know, when you're dealing with card illustration or advertising illustration you know, for for these these uh, types of um, you know IPs like Dungeons and Dragons or Magic, you know, um, you know, you have to always think about readability as well. So, if it's only you know Magic is like a three inch card, you know, does it read? Uh, and it's got to read immediately. So, you know, uh, for instance, this top top area, you have a lot of really nice things going on, um, but it's your values uh, themselves are uh, uh, aren't grouped enough together to make the uh, image as readable as it could be. So a lot of the information that you put in is, is kind of getting lost on it. Uh, and, you know, that, that got really easily. Uh, and I mean, heck, it happens to me all the time. So. You know, you could see like some of the other ones, like the one on the uh, the right hand corner on that um, on the uh, uh, if you go two down, John. Yeah. Here. Right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a little bit more clarified. You could see it's a it's a dark thing against a light thing. Uh, so, you know, just pick a very simple set of of areas: foreground, background, middle ground, or background. Um, you know, uh, foreground, background, and just commit to a value range in, in each of them and keep that nice and consistent. Another thing I, I would say is that I, I think something like this is uh, you have a lot of interesting, uh, you know, uh, characters and things like that, but start to think about, you know, how you could display them in terms of uh, a stronger sense of light so that you have some sort of emphasis on it and just be careful with just repeating shapes. I think like, especially like in the background, I think you're doing a great job of like designing your, your landscapes to get the eye as like a, as a, uh, a, uh, you know, a through line, a compositional tool to, to get the eye, direct the eye towards the main characters. But, uh, you know, take a look at more, uh, references of, of, of like mountains and you'll notice that the, you know, there's a lot more variation in what you might might have. The one thing I was going to say about this is like you you have 
you know, a Terry Pratchett uh, tribute in here. Uh, you know, it's it's a nice nice piece. It's it's cool. It's got a lot of characters. I don't know how. I think it kind of uh, interrupts the flow of the 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 portfolio, in my opinion, uh, because you know, it's very different. For, it's very different, yeah. And so the function is really different. So like, if this were like, this would be considered like an editorial piece. And if you had a bunch of uh, editorial pieces that look like this with likenesses, and then you threw in, you know, one of your, uh, your fantasy, like the previous image, uh, then it would be confusing because, it, it, you know, you have two different markets. So there's nothing wrong with that uh, in terms of like your interests. I would just keep it separate, maybe throw it in a separate tab. Uh, and if you don't have enough pieces to show that, or if it's not work that you want to do, then I would just take it out. If, uh, I, something I'm going to say just generally about the portfolio, about all all the pieces, because some, and, and again, some are are more effective than others. But uh, Owen, you, you, you've you shown me that you have the ability to finish and to, and have and to inform really well. I think a lot of it is dependent on what you're looking at and what you're referencing. Um, you'll look at, you will not believe the extent that somebody like Tyler Jacobson or Chris Ron or, or Ray Bonilla uh, go through to organize the information at, where they have the best information, whether it's creating a 3D model and lighting it, uh, whether it's you know just doing a lot of research, but there's areas that are incredibly well informed and other areas that aren't, and and it it it's it it's beating up on the uh, the totality of the pieces. And so, again, pick your pick your target. You know, it's like if if okay, so if it is Chris Ron or if it is, um, you know, John Foster, whoever that's do, that, that you're trying to look at their how they're getting that great facilitation everywhere is they they put the effort and time in to reference everything properly you know it's like i can see you know some of the landscape stuff it's like you'll do this real high finish like in this piece right here and then the landscape it changes completely it's like it's uninformed well you should be informing clouds you should be informing trees and mountains and environments um it's all part of it and so I think that just getting in the habit of good habit of doing the research, of creating the mood boards that you need um, or, or reference boards that you need uh, are going to make a big difference. Absolutely. I, I agree. You, you know, you're, you're not going to rely on like you could only store so much information in your in your head. If you look at somebody like Steve Prescott, who's who, who's somebody, if you don't know his work, uh, another great magic artist stylized you know very uh, in his in his nature but look how you got to see how clean and how clear his shapes are and how clear the light source is and what he's communicating you know um victor adame is another person uh who i would look at uh you know just like really really clean uh wiley beckart you know like take your work and just put it up against you know uh, your piece and put it up against him and just ask yourself like what are they doing that I'm not? And be really analytical about it. But I think it really first starts out with reference. I'm a huge yeah. proponent of reference, and I don't know an artist that that isn't really. Um, right. You know, some of the best drawers I know that draw well from memory still go back when they need reference. They get reference. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've we, you know I've had that conversation with Wesley Burt. Uh, we've you know good friends with Chris Payne. We draw with Chris frequently, and Chris will be the first one to tell you it's like. I'm as good as my reference. You know, if I, if I can, you know, he's, I don't, um, you know, he's not, he changes his reference immensely. And Norman Rockwell changed his reference immensely, but he was, but he was a reference hound. Um, this piece that I have up right now is one of the pieces that I don't see. I, I, I think you have good reference. I think you have enough to, to accomplish. I don't see any, any, any weak links in this. I think, Maybe as the heads get for, become more imaginative, the one down at the bottom, imagine if you built a 3D model of that and you lit it so you had the information you did from the one at the top. Um, then you could really control it. Anyway, I, I don't want to get too far into talking about individual pieces, but I will compliment you on this. This type of work, it needs to live on ArtStation. 
That's mm -hmm. when the art directors were that part of the industry. They use it. That's that's their their first go to is art station. Not so much if you're doing like editorial book or or book illustration, advertising illustration. They're not th those art directors. They're not looking at art station like they are like the um, uh, like the entertainment in the games world is. Agreed. Agreed. So, and uh, I I just want to want to say also this is I don't know how you feel about this, but uh, it's a just don't don't put in your descriptions uh if that it was for a class assignment like it is if it's a portfolio right. piece it is a portfolio it is supposed to be a professional piece period so just keep it simple and if it's old take it out because if it's so much better because uh, i remember irene gallo I, I remember having a conversation with her, listening to a conversation with her uh, about looking over a portfolio. And she used to tell me that like, I, I will look at the worst piece and say, I'm, uh, be, and look for that, the weakest piece in the portfolio and ask myself, am I okay with this? If, if this is their worst day and this is what I get as, as work. And if the answer is no, then, you know, that she's going to move on. Uh, and so you're, she always used to, she kept saying, saying to us, you're only as good as your worst piece. And, you know, when I heard that, I remember going right back to my website and taking all the pieces out that were, uh, or old weren't, weren't representative of what, what my abilities, my skill level is, you know, especially out of school, like you, you grow so much. Um, so just be really, uh, it's quality, not quantity, you know, really, really focus on the quality over the quantity on it. If you had to pick between the two. Yeah. Uh, here's a good question for you, Ray. Um, uh, uh, what if, what is the, uh, excuse me, I think it's what if uh, the art you do isn't like anyone else's? Uh, how do you just react to that immediately? I know how I do. You're not looking hard uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, uh, you know, it's like you're you're not as unique as you think. And, uh, you know, it's, it it's the human race has been around long enough that they've, a lot of stuff is, has been done. And, and so if you find that, if, um, that way, like, if you find that that's, you know, what your work is, you're feeling like that, I would just look, keep looking at more work. Cause that's usually a sign that you're not looking at a wide enough spectrum, uh, of work. Um, and so, and then on the, on the other side too, is if your work doesn't look like the stuff that people that in the industry that you uh that you want to work in then just that work doesn't function for it and that's okay you just have to find a venue for that work uh, i hope that makes sense like it's not it, you know if if i wanted to uh if i if i'm a gallery painter and i wanted to work in video games right and i showed my gallery paintings to an art director for blizzard and said hey you know what do you, you know, I'm, I'm unique. I'm, you know, no one looks like me in Blizzard. Uh, they're going to say, yeah, that's, that's an issue because we need people that look like the stuff that we create. Uh, you know, then, then the work's not the right venue for it and you have to go find another venue. So just be, just be honest with yourself and look at when you're looking at professional work, don't look at it for like, you know, you, yes, look at it for style, look at it for range of quality, but Look at it also for like this is the type of work that is being used in this industry, uh, and then uh, if it's not the type of work you you're interested in doing, uh, then go find another venue um, for right. that work. That, that, that kind of answers this question: uh, Does your muse have to do the same art? Um, I have muses for different things. Um, right. I, have, I have artists that I love that I never do any, I'll never do anything that's anywhere like there, anything like theirs, but I love their work. I use them as inspiration. Uh, but if I was like saying, okay, uh, I'm, I want to focus on doing, you know, celebrity portrait, my muse would have to do a lot of celebrity portraits. <laughs> right. uh, um, I mean, you need to, you need, you need that. They have to be in the same, do, doing the same function. But you can look at, you know, if if you're thinking about portfolio and appropriateness of work in a portfolio, yes, the muse needs to be doing what you want to do. That's the whole point. 
Okay, let's jump to another portfolio. This was really nice yeah. work. Oh, and yeah. thanks for sharing. Um, thanks for sharing, Owen. I appreciate that. Good. And, Best and of luck. This goes to some other thing too that I wanted to mention. It's like this was hard for me to 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 figure out at the beginning of to learn to get comfortable with. Um, especially I had a very my father was a very famous artist. And, you know, I was always thinking about, well, I'm I don't look very good against that, uh compared to that. But when I was starting, I, I did figure out. And it took me a while to get comfortable with it. But if I put my foot in the water, I committed and I showed my work, I got, I learned faster. So I, I love that, you know, people sharing their work with us and be willing to, to talk about it constructively. Because number one, Ray and I would be do, doing nobody any favors at all if we weren't honest. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big part of it. Find a community. A find some find some people that are professionals that work at a high level that can be honest with you about what you're doing. Um, there's no, you know, uh, there's no value in you know beating somebody up real badly about their artwork. To me, it's like no, you need to you need to figure out how to help this person. You need to figure yeah. out how how to make this better. And uh, Owen, oh, and you're you're doing a really nice job here. I hope some of the things we said made sense. And anybody else, we look at their work. This is this is just a, a, a professional interaction of of how you grow as an artist, and that's how you need to that's how you need to think and and get comfortable with it. You know, one of the things that uh, Ray, I joke about this all the time, like going to doing the illustration academy in a live event. And think, you know, I'm the smartest guy in the world. I got all these great professionals coming in. I'm, you know, I'm the youngest one here. I'm learning from them. Right. Until I was making that walk across the lawn to go to figure drawing the first night. And I was like, what was I thinking? I'm going to be sitting in between Chris Payne and Gary Kelly drawing the figure. And I, and again, I, it was so painful. And I didn't think I was going to be, I, I was sweating. I was nervous, but I learned a bunch. I sat there and I learned and I got better by doing that. Even if, you know, you, you feel like you're exposing yourself, but that's, you know, this is, you know, being an artist is a lot like show and tell you make something and you got to put it out there. You got to get comfortable in doing that. And that's, you can grow so much faster if you're willing to do that. Well said. Yeah, we can, I can, I can tell you a hundred stories about my insecurities. <laughs> 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 if you want to see our insecurities, join us on Thursdays at uh, Drawing Hive. <laughs> I have them, I have them stacked up around my we room, fumble, hanging behind yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> we fumble for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So Allison, Allison, I believe Allison just enrolled in our program, okay. uh, and um, uh, I, you know, so she hasn't had our classes. But she's in our program, and so mm -hmm. I would like to be able to take a look at what she's doing. I think it's the same Allison Weber. And so, I, you know, I'm looking at this right now, and, you know, my immediate reaction to what I'm seeing, you know, like artwork I'm seeing is like, what does this person do? Mm -hmm. um, is this is this from, is this one artist? Is this a number of different artists? Is that, you know, you really, really have to, Again, I know if it's the right person, and I think it is, they, they, they've they enrolled in our illustration, our uh, Catherine Lamb's uh, process, skill, and craft class. And that class, the, big, the main focus in that class is going to be focusing on getting control and accepting uh, a picture as a collection of shapes. And through, con you know, constructive picture making, you can control those with a, with a process. And... Um, Things that, you know, Ray was pointing out in the last portfolio. This is a, you know, first thing you learn as an artist, which is like, you know, the, there's a great quote by, you know, Vince Lombardi, you know, talking to his team after a, a terrible game. And he started with, he goes, let's start from the beginning. And he held up a football. And he said, this is a football. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, a picture is, 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 you have to think about, you know, the most simplistic thing you learn is a picture is how something reads on the page. And in constructive picture making, it's always, is this going to be a light object against the dark background or a dark object against the light background? Because that's how we see things. And so learning how to control the shapes on the page um, 
is kind of the first step in, see, in seeing that way. And so, uh, you know, in our first classes, we don't really identify, like make our students identify a direction like, oh, you, are, are, do you want to do advertising work or do you want to do editorial work? We bring a series of guest speakers in for you to learn about the industry at a really high level. You'll see seven guest speakers every semester, plus all of the faculty members, the 11 faculty members that we have. Uh, you'll you'll catch them in different places in study hall or in figure draw, or life drawing or whatever, or, or open drawing nights or whatever. And so you'll learn you'll learn more that way too. But um, right now, as as a portfolio, I think you need to identify what you want to make this portfolio for. And again, that's, um, you know, as again, just like I said, what, what, you know, we're, we're basing everything we say on portfolios from our personal experience with art directors and also the art directors that we bring into our program that talk about what they're looking for. And the, again, they want to see the artwork that's usable to them. And so I know that you haven't made a commitment to any of this at this point. And so that's something that, you know, we'll work on and you'll get to, um, you know, showing uh, if <laughs> back to the, the art, the art director that said that uh, was that I said earlier, that quote was from Mark Chiarella, who was the art director at DC Comics cover, you know, doing the cover stuff for DC Comics for 24 years. And he was very, you know, he was so impatient. And he was like, you know, the comic book industry moves really fast. You better show me what I'm looking for. And if I see, you know, what you were doing earlier that, that, that day or what you had for breakfast, I'm not going to look anymore. I don't want to <laughs> read about you. I don't want to know about you. I want to know that you can do what I'm looking for. And so, again, uh, you, you're saying that you're, uh, you just haven't gotten there yet. And we'll help you with that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it seems like, I mean, I would look at this, and I, I would say, like, this seems like a, a student portfolio you, you, where you were exposed to a lot of different things and you tried a couple, a lot of things out, you know, and that's that's totally cool. You know, uh, it's just a matter of now just picking the, those things that you you want to want to do and and having a focus to it, you know, because you might have interests, but you've got to be able to just have that one focus that you can have, like, like we're. John was talking about like get into the industry and then from there you could start to to branch out yeah but it's just about about presenting yourself as a cohesive uh your work presenting your work as a one cohesive voice yeah so the, the the other thing I would do too it's like you have a number of these portraits it's like uh um okay if that's something you want to focus on that should be one of your categories I would I would narrow of what you're showing up front. Don't confuse anybody. And you know, I was you know you have illustration here. You have your illustrated portraits there. Um, I I would not have a one portfolio that dealt with writing samples and visuals at the same time. Make separate make separate portfolios for them. You agreed. And then you got some branding work here. Oh, you can, and again, it's really funny. And I and I'm I'm a little embarrassed that to say because I went to your portfolio and I click that, and this is what I saw. And I thought this was the contents of your portfolio. I didn't realize these were subsets. Those subsets should be at the top, and it should be you should narrow it um and and then show off because you know there's a lot more to it. But there's a whole there, you know, there's a whole portfolio that lives down here. Yeah, you have to understand, like the way John was flipping through the portfolio. I mean, that's how most people do do that. You know, they like, you know, if there's not a clear direction of like, hey, this is what I do, this is my my work, then it uh, it becomes a little bit uh, you know difficult to understand, and then you miss miss a lot of work uh, if it's not organized um, in a clear manner. Right. I'll, um, give a, I'll give a pro tip for a uh, web user experience. Um, if it doesn't come naturally, there's an amazing tool. I believe they've got a pretty awesome free trial version of it or, or like free, free, uh, freemium version. It's called a hot jar. And even if your site doesn't have a ton of traffic, you can use it. 
and it'll show you a heat map of what people click on. And so you get a really good yeah. on like, like even just your friends going to the site, um, you get a really good idea. It's like where someone's going in the wrong way or, oh, wow, everybody's clicking on this one thing, but I don't want them to. Yeah, so that's awesome. Very helpful. Um, if I were to go like as if this was an illustration portfolio and this was the home page right here, it would be so much more successful. You know, you have this kind of salon style. You showed me a bunch of work that you're doing. And then, you know, then you can break it up into subsets. But but I think that that would be this page is really successful uh, in that in that manner, um, you know, to do, you know, again, back to everybody's everybody comes in at their own place. Everybody's at the, wherever they are in their in their search to be a professional or their venture to be a professional. Um, so I would be looking at the you know the highest level work that's that's that relates to this find your muses and then look at it and say well is my is my drawing acclimat high enough to do to do this is my composition as strong as this and there's places that it is and there's places that that you know i mean this this is really this is a really marvelous little piece right here whoops where did i didn't it didn't come up well there there we go hold on I got to move my Q and A here. Hold on. Yeah, but you know the way that that's done, that's that's executed really well. Um, and you know, there's air. The, you again, part of that might be I can see that you can finish at that level. Maybe it's some of this stuff requires a process of you know doing thumbnails, doing value studies, and having the right reference and light and the effective lighting to make this stuff at a higher level. I think you have the ability to do that. I just don't think you're do. I just don't think you're you're employing that right now. Does that make sense, Ray? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's all about kind of organization and focus, and yeah. uh, just getting a process down too. Like if you don't, if you're, you know, for all of you that are, have like you know a, that are, are, think, are thinking about this as we're we're talking about. Um, you know, these portfolios, if they're thinking, well, I don't have a process or I don't have a way of working with, maybe that's where you start, you know, is, is thinking about how to actually build a picture on a consistent level, because that's what you need in order to put a portfolio together. And also just to not only get into the industry, but to last in it uh, as well. If, you know, uh, it's like my, my teacher, Craig Nelson used to say, like, um, every piece you do, should look like you had a blast doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, he he was like, he pointed at this piece right here because I, I was like, oh, I just love the brush strokes. It's like, you had so much fun. He's like, I had 102 fever. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to paint in like 10 minutes and 10 minute sessions because then I had to go lay down for a half an hour and then come back in. So it was an awful experience for me, you know, but that's like, he, he was able to do that because he had a process. He had a way of starting uh, and ending. Uh, and it's just, you know, the things that, you know, John, the slides that you had shown before, you know, that, that's like, a that's just as much of a mindset that you have to put yourself in as, as anything else too. It's, it's, yes, it's a curriculum, but also, you know, it's a mindset, um, that you as an artist need to put yourself in, in order to, to find your voice, uh, well, they, find they, who you are. And, and that's how, and, and Ray, I know I've talked to you because, because you were, you know, part of developing what we do with the gallery side. Uh, so I, I've talked to all of our instructors about it, but we want our, we want our education. We want our curriculum to be usable information. We want it to be right. the most functional and direct way to develop that portfolio. Our outcome, and I tell everybody all the time, first time when I talk to them, our outcome is making a professional portfolio. And we want to help you with that path. These are the things, these are the toolkits. These are the things you need to get there. I got a good question here. A real simple one is, uh, what is the venue for portraits? My opinion of, you know, my favorite portrait people is the editorial work. I mean, there's some book work for sure, but editorial work, I mean, there's all the, you know, everybody thinks editorially, there's Time Magazine, there's Rolling Stone, you know, there's all the big guns. The thing, and Dale Stefanos describes it this way. The, the the magazines that are at eye level at the kiosk, <laughs> <He> says, <laughs> those great. are the ones you want to work for. He said, but when you're getting started, he goes, look at the bottom shelf. He goes, there's 
There's magazines you've never heard of before that are industry magazines, medical magazines, financial magazines. They all buy art. They all buy illustration. Uh, yeah. Dale said some of the and Dale's a really, I mean, exquisite and uh, extremely busy editorial illustrator. Um, he said he still gets, you know, maybe it's twenty to thirty percent from those eye level magaz magazines, and then he gets most of his income from the bottom level, from the bottom shelves. And he said, what lives on those bottom shelves are like, again, you know, industry, um, uh, uh, medical, pharmaceutical, um, uh, farming, you know, magazines that are directed towards a particular industry. Um, the biggest one, he said, is the, the university magazines. They pay extremely well. He gets all kinds of work based on the work that he does. Like he'll do, get commissioned portraits from working for those magazines. Well, they'll want something to hang on the wall. Um, so again, uh, to me, that is that would be my starting place with portraits. And I, I, that's a big part of what I did as an illustrator. And it was almost all for magazines. And some of them, you know, brochures for you know, farmland industries, uh, hill science. I did some crazy stuff. <laughs> I've never thought I would get a job to do it, you know, to do a portrait of a, you know, uh, or do the whole board uh, drawings of a whole board of all the board members from a bank. Um, you know, that, you know, that you just have to really look for it. Yeah. But it started at the editorial stuff. Okay. Let's go on to another portfolio here. Thanks, Allison. Appreciate yeah. it. Allison, thank you so much. All right, here's another here's another art station page. Did we go through this one? No. No, we didn't look at this one yet. Let's let's go back here. Again, what I was saying to like consistency. Um I said I want to I it, it, and again, one of the things I struggle with looking like determining. Like that's not going to be in a professional portfolio, those hand studies. There's no point. It looks like an exercise. It looks like a, a school assignment. And I don't know anything about River. I uh, probably should have read about him. But um, uh, but you have to uh, really define uh, what, the, what your subject matter is or what, what venues you're chasing. And, um, you know, it's like here, I, I, I was looking at this piece earlier. And, you know, I look at, again, you know, in a study hall, we have John Nymeister and our, our team of um, Mark and uh, Rob come in and help us uh, look at student work. And it's really, actually, it's a, I, I did want to mention this because visual development kind of lives between the illustration world and the concept world um, or the animation world too. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the visual development artists I know started in illustration programs and then they've gone outside to learn character design or environment design, some very specific things. And I love the fact that we can offer, you know, we have students that are wanting to do RPG games and fantasy illustration. Well, John Nymeister is doing like splash work for Blizzard for the Diablo team. It's like, where, I mean, what better source? they can get his point of view on Wednesday night. And so all of the stuff, you know, Ray and I feel like we're going to school on those guys because uh, <laughs> right, yeah. it's not our expertise, you know? Right. Um, but I know that if I were like critiquing this character, it's not informed enough. Uh, the level of information has to go up. Just remember who's going to be looking at this work. Where, you know, your job is to design this character. Who's going to see it next? The modeler. And so can a modeler build from this? It would be very difficult because there's things that you don't know are in front of other things. Um, there's things that aren't um, articulated that well. Um, it's, a, it's a nice overall design, idea-wise and everything. But then just remember somebody has to build this. And it's not going to be you. It's going to be somebody else that's going to get passed along and it's got to be articulated. I, I love that. I love having modelers come into our program, into our character programs. I do all the moderating on both sides. And I love when, you know, they say, oh my God, I could build from this. You know, that's right. like the ultimate compliment to our student. 
Um, and I, I love hearing them say that. And, and yeah. John would say, John Nymeister, the, the other instructors would say, that's the true test right there. Can somebody make this from, from your design? It's all about function. It's all yep. about function. Yeah, I, I find that like the the portfolio, you know, the thing about portfolios is that it's not, um, and this is something I, I learned early on. It's not everything that you've you produce just as 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 an artist. You know, there are going to be a lot of. I mean, just, I mean, Thursday nights, John, right? I mean, like none of that stuff is going to go in our portfolios. It's just us practicing. Just us trying to get, you know, like you, you always call it the push-ups and sit-ups, but uh, it's it's stuff that you're always going to do as an artist to help uh, improve, and you're always improving. You always want to improve, but when you're presenting a portfolio, it's got to be a cohesive experience, and it's got to be focused. So, you know, you just have to ask yourself, okay, what is it that you want to do? Now, you said uh, it, it says uh, digital concept artist, so there's like we said, like what's the the function? I see a character design, but then the the three other ones in the row um, are completely different types of images uh, themselves, um, you know. And then uh, the row after that, you see like a, a figure drawing, you know. Uh, it's and then a, a portrait, and a lot of them have varying degrees of finish in them as well. So again, that you know, as as an artist. That, that happens all the time to us, but when you're, you know, you only want to pick the best work that fits the purpose of your portfolio uh, and then just get rid of uh, the rest. Uh, so I think if it's, if you want to get into concept, I think drawing is, is, is uh, 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 facilitation in drawing and understanding shape design and understanding just that, that level, I think is super important. I think reference is, is key. Like, you know, there's, there's varying degrees of, of uh, finish in your piece, but I think it has a lot to do with what it is that you're referencing. Um, and so I, I, that's super key. Cause like, it looks like, like the portrait on the, the second level right there, the uh, sec, uh, second one on the, the second row to, to, from the left. Um, you see the portrait, right? Sure. Not, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Go ahead and, and click on that. Right. So like, that has really nice light. Uh, it's got a, a nice mood to it. Uh, I, I think the if that's a signature on the left, I think it's really distracting. So I would just take the signature uh, uh, right out. Um, but outside of that, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice piece, and I could tell it's reference. It's well informed, right. you know. But if you go to the next next one, um, you know, or the you, you know, it's it's hard to know who who. There's like a different artist, you know, right. or even that one as well, you know. And so it's it's a uh, like so it says, you know, it, in the description, it says it's a digital painting of a behind the scene image. Right. So that's great as a practice um, study, but you don't want to do that as, um, you know, as a portfolio piece like these doodles, like they, they feel like sketches that you would have like in a sketchbook. And that's cool. That's great. That's what you should be doing. Um, but it's more about, okay, what purpose does this, this fit? So this is what, like, these are the types of pieces that would inform a portfolio piece. Um, it wouldn't be a portfolio piece. Yeah. I mean, the difference of, uh, this is the biggest difference right here, the fi fire in our eyes. Mm -hmm. The information in that piece compared to the one below it. And I'm saying that it's got to be, it's, it, I'm not saying everything's got to be polished and finished, but it's got to be informed. And the information, even if you paint loose and like in real impasto paint or something, it's got to be well drawn and informed to make sense, especially on this type of work. You know, the mm -hmm. dragon, if uh, the uh, the great serpent here, it falls down the most because, again, I, I know you don't have good reference of that. And so you either got to build a model um, and light it properly, uh, do your research on what this dragon is going to look like and learn, you know, the model at a high level because that's what the professionals are doing to do it um yeah other... if you talk to somebody like like tyler jacobson uh chris ron i mean i've had conversations with them and you would have thought that they were paleontologists oh absolutely <laughs> when they, you know they, they're so a collection of weaponry you know right, uh, right. Uh, of um apparel from certain certain parts of time uh absolutely. parts of the world all becomes 
huge to to their performance at the end. Um, here's a good good question, anonymous attendee. Uh, any tips for finding magazines to submit art to besides looking at a magazine rack? Well, magazine rack is great, but you can go to the New York Society of Illustrators and look at their editorial section. You can go to American Illustration. Uh, on that portfolio sheet brief that, that I showed earlier, at the bottom, there are resources. And those resources are the magazines and the communication arts. Uh, you got to learn... Uh, about the shows and the judging that's done in the industry and where to go to find the best the best work each year. And so, you know, all of that stuff is stated in those briefs. But, it, you know, just off the top of my head, I would say Society of Illustrators, SILA, you have New York Society of Illustrators, uh, Los Angeles Society of Illustrators, um, uh, uh, Communication Arts Magazine, um, and uh, American Illustration, three by three. Am I missing anything? The real obvious ones. Spectrum. 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 Yeah. Spectrum's yeah. not really producing anymore. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shows, so shows my age. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think that's. So people always ask me too, like, where do I find artists to look at? You know that. I think the annuals are the best. The best source of all of that stuff. Like you get to find out who they worked for. You know, a lot of times the art, the art directors. Uh, so where, where the artwork was, was done uh, and who the artist was and, and then their websites, usually their contact information is usually in, in the annuals themselves. So, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone through annuals and have been surprised like, Oh, wow. I didn't know you can draw a nose like that, you know, uh, like, uh, or, or, oh, wow, that's a really interesting, is that oil paint? Is that digital? I should look this artist up. And then you you come across a new process that you didn't even know about or a talk, you know, that was really informative about influences, you know. So, you know, a lot of your muses start from, uh, my muses started from the Society of Illustrator and you know, so that's how I fell in love with with illustration. And then from there just went on, you know, to, to all the other different things. So, you know, River also, you know, you're, uh, I always love paraphrasing John's dad um, in a in a talk. I'll never forget it. Like I was listening to a talk that he had done, and he said that, you know, be careful with who your influences are because they can get you into a lot of trouble. And uh, so just look at only the absolute best people that do what you, you know what you want to do, um, and and then you're they don't have to be like like we were talking about before. They don't have to be specific to the uh, uh the type of work you want to get it's important that you have a lot of muses from that people that you're looking for that do the thing that you want to do they could but they could be other things as well i mean i mean tyler and i always talk about john singer sergeant john, you know john singer sergeant did not work for magic the gathering right uh but a huge influence you know on on tyler but so but also tyler was looking at tons of other people um you know that worked in the industry and did Jeremy Jarvis, Brahm. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, one book I'm going to recommend is Imaginative Realism by James Gurney. Take a look at that. I think it's a great, great book about process uh, if you're interested in that. And that's the type of stuff that we also talk about all the time. You know, uh, I love Dale's, Dale's uh, uh, like go to uh, criticism on the pieces. Like, this seems like a thumbnail problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's so true though you know uh and the importance of that and just getting used to getting used to just how to go about properly building an image and i think you'll you'll start to see not only better results but consistent results so thanks for showing your portfolio yeah thank you very much yeah. um the another portfolio here but there's a really good question uh how would you re recommend arranging your overall portfolio if you have different interests for example, I have interest in children's book illustration and character design for video games. Okay, well, character design for animation, like a visual development artist, uh, which, which I really keep refer. I know visual development's become a term in a lot of different places. It used to be only for animation. Um, right, yeah. I'm old enough to, to know that. <laughs> but now it's gone. You know, we're, we have uh, Andy Park, head of visual development, uh, coming as a guest speaker for Marvel Studios next semester. Guys are right. total rock star. So he would probably, you know, throw me out of the room. But the, um, um, 
I'm older than he is. Uh, <laughs> the, the, um, but children's book and doing character design go hand in hand. So some of my favorite visual development artists, you know, Carter Goodrich, Peter DeSev, uh, yeah. Claire Wendling. I mean, they're phenomenal. Uh, they came from the book industry and that went on to the animation world. Um, if it's if it is distinctively for video games, then you get into a whole nother realm. And right. so I would suggest separate them, separating them. Um, because as I said, a children's book art director and and children's book is, is kind of like a, a, its own little satellite in the illustration industry. They have their own shows. They have their own agents. Um, it, it, it's very different than being an editorial illustrator. And you have to, you, you got to research it and learn about them. But um, the act of putting a children's book together, of doing all of the work, you do storyboarding, you do character design, you make the finished illustrations, you are a visual development artist. And so it's a, it's really a great place. Um, very different in the, in the children's book uh, industry. Editors are very important. Uh, the illustrators will work with the editors as well as the art directors. So learning those things becomes essential. I would separate them if it's going to be that that's two very different things. Agreed. It's a, it's a, How, this is a, uh, or would you simply recommend that I pick one interest and go with it? I would do, you know, I would approach one first again, yeah. as I said, if you're trying to, if you're an emerging artist, I think it's critical that you have a portfolio that's hireable and you, you know, think about, okay, now I'm going to have two things. I'm going to have two portfolios. There are two different parts of the industry. That's just going to take so much more time and you're going to be chasing longer. The goal, I mean, there's so much, so, like, I, I'm very fortunate. I have made a living as an artist since my early twenties and everything that I've done financially has been wrapped around art. And it's, 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 uh, and it hasn't always been easy. I've had a lot of great information gifted to me <laughs> uh, just because of the the people I, I've been fortunate to be around a lot of really great artists starting out very young and that gave me really quality information. And it was still a struggle at times. Um, but, you know, the more focus you can get, the quicker you can get there. So that's my answer to that. Um, I wanted to pull this up. Ray, any comments here? about what we're looking at uh i think that like the uh i think it's another thing that like uh it's i, I see a you know it, there's a lot of work and it's a lot of different types of applications for work so i think organization the first thing i, th I think about is like okay so like uh you have a superman uh looks like a an editorial um illustration right up next to a, a character uh, design that that would be more enigmatic for like a children's book or or animation um and my my first thing is like okay i don't know what this person does you know and if, if it's a lot of things that's great but it's not it's i would be hard pressed sending an art director to a specific part of that website and and finding the work that they want uh so you know, you can have uh, like it's great that you you show you're showing process and things like that, and um, but like things like blue background, I couldn't decide which was better. Like, get all of that stuff out. You want this is my work. If this is a finished portfolio, here you go. You know, uh, you shouldn't uh, like another thing an art director told me was I shouldn't hear uh, <laughs> I shouldn't hear you thinking. Uh, in your portfolio, it should be really clear. I'm like, this is who I am. Uh, yeah, this is and, right. This is so different. Like, right from here to there. Right. I mean, it's, it is it's like so two different artists. Different. Yeah. And so again, organize that. Get and you know that that's always a result in my in my experience. That's always a result of a product of going just going through school and learning arts. Right. I mean, I taught at universities for uh over 13 years and i you know and i've been you know i like to say like i'm an ex student uh, you know uh, or an ex uh, a college student i'm always like i feel like i'm learning all the time uh but you know when you're 
going through that growth pattern, you know, you're changing so rapidly. That should not, you shouldn't see that change in the portfolio. It should be who you are, you know, uh, who you want to present yourself to art directors as. So um, anything that's, that's old, that doesn't look like what you do now, I would just get, uh, I would just remove. Um, and if mm -hmm. you have diff different interests, it's all about kind of organization, but I would really focus on just one thing. Um, because mm -hmm. what's happening is that you're, you have beautiful work, but they're being, uh, the pieces next to them that aren't of the same quality are uh, uh, sabotaging that experience and making the work look uh, not as good uh, as a result. Yeah, real, real interesting. This is this piece is at a very high level as a children. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really well done, but it's so drastically different than the fantasy stuff, the mermaid, the, the mermaid stuff that you were doing. And uh, one really requires a lot of realism, and one doesn't. And right. um, uh, you know, I could see a whole portfolio built around, you know, towards children's book in this direction. You do that very well. And it's, and again, this, if you, if you were doing good storytelling and, you know, again, you know, to show, a, to show a book in a portfolio, you don't have to show the whole book. I, I was always told that you got to show a cover, uh, an establishing shot, and then some type of action with the main with one of the one of the main figures. Uh, the the main character or character has to repeat it multiple times, but you got to show action like before action, after action. So you really only need to show four to six pieces to represent a whole book. Um, but if if I saw four to six pieces that related to this piece done this way, I I would be like, yeah, that, that there, there's possibilities right there. Totally, totally. Uh, uh, and then I would look at what you're doing here. It's like, okay, look at, you know, back to those names that we were bringing up. Look at how John Foster, look at how Ashley Lovett would handle this, right. you know, and, and this needs, you need to up your game here in your facilities um, compared to what you're doing with the children's book stuff. And I think, and again, you're showing you can, you can, you can draw, but I think a lot of it is just uh, referencing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, let's let's look at um. There was there was something. I'm not going to be able to find it. I'll, hopefully, I can. Um. There was a portfolio, and I and I think it, it, it that and I don't I I don't I'm not going to keep searching to figure out where it is. Here's another one, a good one to talk about. But, um, you shouldn't break. The particular portfolio I'm talking about was just like in general message to everybody. They were they had their categories of their illustration work they were doing, and all their illustration work was like editorial or book. They had it divided up in medium, like this is watercolor illustration, this is digital illustrate. No one cares. Right. Um, um, you know, like like our like if you came to our classes and you said, "What do you want me to work in?" It's like. We don't care. <laughs> uh, work in what you're most, what you're best at, and what you're most comfortable with. Now you do have to realize that everything gets delivered digitally, and so you're going to have to have enough digital skills to be able to do color corrections and and crop and and send, uh, submit that way, uh, and photograph, which is a huge thing. Um, but um, or scan, uh, but book books portfolio shouldn't be broken up because of medium i'm not saying this one isn't because they're two very they're very different things um this is some nice stuff mm -hmm. very nice really high skill level yeah i think in, in you know uh you know, in my opinion, I think that's, it's, it's kind of the same thing we were talking about before. It's, you know, the skills, you know, I think it's, you have some really nice, nice things going, but it's also the applications are so wide, you know, it's hard to nail down what it is that you want to do with this portfolio. Like what, who, who do you want to show? And I know you have like the top, uh, layer of, um, you know, you have like a, a a list of things that you do 3D and, and 2D, but it's kind of buried under all of this, uh, these things. Like you have to understand art directors, you know, recruiters, they don't have 
a lot of time. They they actually have less time, you know, uh, than than they desire, right? So when they're going through your portfolio, they've got to be able to identify. You know, they're going to decide really quickly whether or not it you're somebody that that can help them solve the problems that they need to be solved. And so uh, I would, I think this page is you know is distracting because it has so many different types of of pieces. This is like every every single piece you've almost ever done. And so I think curating that a lot more um, neatly and more focused, I think is, is important. Cause like yeah, you have, it, it's like, Ray, I want to say the best thing I could do for this portfolio is just reorganize it, take some things out, group them. Yeah. You can look, you could be much more effective with organization. Uh, you have very good skill um, and capable of doing a lot of things. I would pick, one or two lanes and just organize that direct directionally. Yeah, uh, and it's 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 Ray, totally asked like you a question. Uh yeah. was uh what was the Im uh, imaginary realism that you mentioned? Uh it's called imaginative realism. It's by James Gurney, G U R N E Y. That guy. Uh, yeah, that guy. Dinotopia. I mean, uh, Dinotopia. He is yeah. Dinotopia. He is the machine. Uh, <laughs> the man behind but, the curtain. Yeah, I I think the it's, you know, I I like it like John keeps saying, I don't mean to sound like a broken record. I think that the skill is there, it's just focus. Um and cuz like if you look at that this is this is a really great this cross section when you go if you go diagonally like Chadwick Bokes Boseman to like the all the went to the one through the to the left, the portrait that's super stylized, and the one like the Adventure Time inspired stuff in the middle. Like I know that that's one artist, but that uh, that's like very classic. It's like okay, you have the facilitation for sure, but just just decide, you know. Like I know John Nymeister has like his range is insane. It's like he's very stylized, but he can he can draw and paint photorealistically. It's the facilitation is there. He just has a focus. When, if you look at his work, the work that he presents, remember the work that you do and the work that you present are two different things. Right. And so, uh, you know, you have to just, again, present yourself as like, this is what I do. And this is specifically what I do. Uh, and if you don't know what you want to do, then I would pick just one thing. Um, yeah. Like this, the top two, I was, I, I thought this is great. I thought this was a portfolio site of different artists right. when you first said that, you know. Um, yeah, it looks like, it looks like an agent's page. <laughs> right, right. It really does, you know. Everybody's good. That, but that's a testament to your, yeah, this is a testament to like your, your range. It's great. You know, just, just pick one. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm going to go on. I'm going to look at one more portfolio yeah. here. Thank, and, thanks for, for sending this in. It's great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very well done. Okay. See if you recognize this stuff. And first, I'll, go, I'll first start with the illustration stuff. This is Joe Tomsick. Uh, Joe is a student that we have right now. We just had her, her first one-person show. She'd been through our illustration program, and she decided to that she felt more comfortable. She thought what her real desire, and she made a commitment to, and started fresh in our painting program. And this is what she did as an illustrator. Website's terrific, by the way. I mean, it mm -hmm. works really well. Images are great. Obviously she's got great facilitation. Um, I'm gonna go backwards here. Typically, and we haven't really done this, the, and I know Ray's websites are arranged this way and Cassandra's, an illustration portfolio, um, very functional, very direct, um, history and time and, and chronological order, uh, artist statement, all of that stuff is very important in a painter's uh, portfolio or website. Right. And so you see things that are, you know, put into chronological order. This is work that she did. Well, she did all this work in our classes, uh, yeah. but she did it and got and went out, paint was paying close attention to what we were talking about, went out and got a show set up at a, at a uh, community college. A really nice facility, and this is the work. Most of this work was done for the show. It's directional. It's a genre. It all looks like it's made from the same artist. 
Um, this is actually, this is the first piece she did for us in our program. And it's the least, has the least continuity. Um, she's grown so much since then. You can yeah. see the facility really well, but come on. This is really yeah. really good stuff. <laughs> Beautiful work. And, and Joe went through, I mean, all of this lying underneath it is a lot and a lot, a lot, a lot of process work. I mean, this stuff, I mean, started with thumbnails and references and reference comps and, you know, studies and just tons of work before the finish was ever attempted. And that's, that's what, you know, you do all that process to clarify your vision uh, and clarify your visual statement. Uh, and so, you know, I just want to always point that out. Like this, Joe didn't wake up, you know, every morning and be like, I think I'm going to paint this thing and then just, just paint it, you know, before uh, right. her coffee went cold, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't work like that. A lot of planning. And there's so much you can see. This is a 12 by 12 inch painting. There's so right. much. I mean, there uh, th there's things that she was doing of different scale, which opens up a broader audience because your audience is the public at this point. And so you open up different um, uh, uh, opportunities to sell at different price points because artwork in galleries is based on, once you establish a size, it's based on by square inch in most cases. Right. So you, and, and, you know, we, go ahead. Right. We, we, we had to talk about, you know, size, but um, size also just for in, in general is, is really important too. You know, it's uh, you know, if you're it, again, like if you, you want to go into visual development, you do uh, you know, color key art or something like that. Uh, working in the format that the your job, the job that you want to do normally works in is really important. You know, we, we talk all the time, like if you want to do magazine cover work, then it's really important that you know how to design for for that size uh, because you can't do, a, you know, an eight by 80 inch piece because there's not, you know, and then try and submit that to a, a magazine. Like it's, it's not going to stand out as much because it's not as useful as something that feels like it already was published. Uh, and so when we get into gallery pieces, you know, variation in size is very important uh, and how you use size, you know, because again, like different price points. Um, so different range of collectors that you can, you can a broader range of collectors because some people either um, just don't have the size or don't have the expendable income, but really love your work. You know, being able to grow your audience like that is, is super important. So all of those things, are taken into consideration. Um, and so, uh, and, and in when going into, you know, when putting together a portfolio and a body of work like, like Joe here does. Really uh, interesting. To say, how great is it to see sold on so many? Of those? <laughs> that's right. that's right. exactly yeah. what that's, I was going to say, Tim. That's <laughs> it. Of, I don't know if anybody noticed, but a lot of them say sold. That doesn't look too bad. You know, something I'm going to have to bring up with. Joe, she stole my signature. <laughs> yeah, that is plate. So this is the first example of plagiarism that we have. That's why we brought Joe's uh, portfolio uh, here. <laughs> oh, no, this, is, this is an exquisite work and real, you know, I love, again, Timmy, you said it. They got a one-man show in a museum at a, you know, at a, at a, at an institution and sold a number of pieces. Yeah. What a better start. That's that's perfect. Hey, that, I look at just, just. I just wanted to point out, like you notice now, you know the information on on the on each of the the images, right? So for like gallery work, that's important. Knowing what the size is, uh, the year, the medium, the, the substrate. What was it painted on? The size and the price that matters. That's very very important information, and right. it's got to be right there and easily available and because gallery directors always i mean those are the things that they want to know i mean we've we've had gallery you know numerous gallery directors in for the program come in and they all say the same thing uh well and know, they and they're dependent on their websites they sell so much work online right. uh, i just want to i just want to reiterate what raymond's talking about we have gallery directors visit with our students yeah just, just so there's no confusion about that they come in they look at our student work. And, right. uh, and the, last, the last one that was in, 
uh, well, t uh, the actually the last two that were in requested work from our students, which was just awesome. I don't know anybody else that does that. Right. And I, it, that's exciting to me. Um, hey, a couple a couple of quick questions before we get out of here. I will say that every one of our programs right now, Timmy, um, all of our intro classes on the painting, the illustration, and the character design. Uh, uh, our prices for our intro classes are seven ninety nine. Uh, they're cheaper than the uh, 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 than the other classes as an intro introduction to our program. But if you pay attention and enrollment, you can stay pretty close to that price if you enroll early and do all the. You gotta know, open your emails. That's right. You gotta read. Because <laughs> yeah, we try to make this affordable for everybody, especially if you can sign up early and keep me and John from sweating we will incentivize you. <laughs> so uh, it's those last minute people that bug us. Um, but uh, yeah, I just want to like add on to what you're saying, John, like uh, everything we're talking about is a deep dive in our program. But, and I know you mentioned this, but like tonight we were talking a lot about art directors and editors and, and people, but really what we're talking about is decision makers. And next semester we have Katie Klobson, art director, Time Magazine. Um, these are not, uh, I want to say right now, the webinar you're attending right now, we, we kind of have to put a regulator on it. It's open to the public, but these are really intimate events where you get to ask questions and you get to interact. And oftentimes John will share when we have art directors, I know John shares student work that gets yeah. submitted in advance. We're also going to have gallery directors. Uh, yeah. it's real common for us, like, uh, the modelers that we bring in to look at our 2D work from our 2D character design program, they love looking at student work and man, they get right to the point. You know, this yeah. works, this doesn't work. So I know we talked about Andy Park, director of visual development, at Marvel Studios, decision maker. Uh, Katie Clipson, our director of Time Magazine, decision maker. Yeah. Uh, Kristen Farr, deputy editor at Juxtapose Magazine. If you don't know about Juxtapose, you should. Yeah. It's maybe one of the biggest art publications in the world. Um, these are all decision makers that- Well, Bill Simkevich is not a decision maker and maybe hasn't made the best decision. But I'm talking about, but John, I'm talking about the art directors. That I know, I'm just, I'm just, I was joking. I was just gonna say- You might not make the best decisions. Great, we also have great artists coming <laughs> in too. <laughs> yeah. He's a bad decision maker. No, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> this is an example. Very of bad one. decision. I, I know him well. No, no, no he's Bill's, awesome Bill's guy. amazing. But I just, I just want to say, it's like you can't beat that. You're gonna get asked, and that's not even. This is a small, tiny portion of our program. Yeah. <laughs> it really hey, is. It, hey, let's let, uh, Timmy. It's the flashy part, but I'm just saying, it's it's only part of it. Yeah. Um, Again, I was going to just tell everybody, Timmy, just like, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I got a couple of days lined out over the next, this, even at the end of this, or what is today, at the end on Friday and next week, you can sign up and get a mentorship consultation with me. Um, I love talking to people that are coming into the program and helping them, you know, yeah. find what fits them well, uh, based on what, where they are and what they're doing. Uh, I'll do that for anybody. Um, the, um, our program is a mentorship. You are connected with your instructor throughout the week with Discord. Nothing ever goes by that we don't answer. Um, if if it does, we Timmy and I hear about it. <laughs> yeah, and I just want I just want to be clear, like because I think it can be confusing when we have we have these big webinars. Your class is not a webinar. You're going to be in a meeting, like Ray and John, and you're going to be able to talk with your instructor. Like it's a very personal. Experience. Absolutely. Like, the best point. way to say it to me is you will get to know your instructor if yeah, you want to know them. And and you're going to become friends with your, your classmates. And it's yeah. not like uh this is not like a an artist mill. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just not. It's it's I it's it's on it's the best program you can do, honestly. Like no. Well, doubt. if you're if you're interested in career, uh you you can put all the art and design schools together and can't touch the outcomes of uh you know the accolades our students have received. Um this was this was what just so we're on the same right. What what's the deadline? Uh the 19th. We enroll 19th. uh we start classes on the 20th. 
we have our intro prices for our, our introductory prices on our um, our first level classes. They're all seven ninety nine, and uh, they're phenomenal. Yeah, uh, John, am I sending am I sending a, uh, a consultation link after this? Are you yeah. free in your week next week? <laughs> yeah, uh, I. <laughs> there's, there's, I have several open days uh, after. Okay. This. I'll make All more right. time if I'll make more time well, if we need it. Well, I'll take take that. advantage of it, please. I'm going to send that link out, everybody. But I just want to let you know, John's time is obviously he's only one man, so uh, it's limited. Space will be very limited, so um, jump on it if you can. Um, please, uh, these are th those consultations are for people that are considering the program, so. Um, yeah, they're not portfolio reviews. They're not portfolio reviews. So please, uh, really, you're probably only going to have value out of it if you really do have questions about the program. Yeah, I'll look at what I do in our consultation as I look at the portfolio, ask you where you want to go with this, and then show you how to get there and show you the put you in the right room with the right person to get you there. Um, that's the best I can do. Um that's what I've done educationally. I've, I, you know, I've always taken a lot of credit for, you know, all the awards that our students have won. But really, what I did is I put them in the room with the right people, <laughs> and they helped them more than I did. Um, so, uh, uh, Timmy, I think we should wrap this up. We're we, we're kind of over time, um, but um, we're always, we you know we're always open. Uh, yeah, can, and uh, sure. this episode is going to be uh, this is going to be posted to YouTube tomorrow. So awesome. awesome. All right, everybody. Raymond, thank you for doing this. Thank you for everybody that joined us tonight. And I hope we said some things that are helpful. Um, if you have more questions, you want to learn more, sign up for a class. We can help you.